but uh, this is this is what I'm fighting with within myself, and it has to do with my relationship to my husband. I have a beautiful husband, and and uh, I mean. We, we have a wonderful life, but there is no attraction between us. And I feel like uh, uh, part of him, is, he's getting, uh, his prostate is enlarged, his heel is permanently inflamed. It's like the movement forward is very slow. And I feel like that is stopping me and like is there another man I'm supposed to be with (laughs) (laughs) and besides that I mean I feel like I have worked on the uh, relationship man woman with him all my life I mean we created I, I'm, I'm eternally grateful to him. I feel like everything so far has been perfectly serving my growth, his growth. But now I feel like there is a standstill. And I've been reflecting on the questions that have been answered, putting them into my own life all the time. And I can see that there is a part of me, I really want him to be different for me not to have to grow in a certain way. If we stand silent long enough, you will answer your own question, won't you? (laughs) Yes. Well, let us jump in here and give you some soothing things to realize. Yeah. You know, a lot of what people call attraction to one another is because most have already been trained away from their own guidance system. Most people that you know are not consciously reaching for good feeling thoughts for the sake of uniting with who they really are. It's not a concept that is consciously practiced among people who have been around for a while. Children practice it all day every day. Jerry and Esther were on an airplane recently where there was a young child, too small, Esther thought, to have the vocabulary it had. It wasn't walking and yet it was saying words. And this child was being strapped into the airplane seat and was not having any of it. It was really throwing a fit. So this little girl is just struggling and screaming and fighting her seatbelt and her parents were not doing anything about it because they couldn't. It was something that they felt required to do. And she was miserable and letting everyone within earshot, which meant everyone on the airplane, know it. And then within about a minute or less, she discovered a then she got revengeful and she started saying mean things she started saying hurt me you hurt me and then uh, other things that were inaudible but were belligerent as she was now making her statement of revenge which was making her feel somewhat better and then within less than a minute she began making a gurgling sound in her mouth that she liked the feel and the sound of. And Jerry whispered to Esther, she's just moved into contentment. (laughs) And then, within another minute, she was laughing and playing. And Jerry and Esther sat uh, feeling enthusiasm that is nearly indescribable as they had witnessed this child personally move herself up the emotional scale a natural thing to do and Esther could not help but notice that it was in large part because she was not interfered with by her parents her parents did not try to make it better they did not respond to her she just had her experience and her preference is to feel better now the basis of what we want to say to you but most most people by the time they've been around for a while they've been trained away from their own 
own ability to move themselves up the scale. And you are, most of you, looking to others to help you to do it. So when someone with means or someone with intelligence or someone who adores you enters your experience and they hold you as an object of attention, you feel better for being part of their experience. And very often, it, as you are sitting here now, feeling sort of the absence of that feeling, we want to say it, it, it's a bit like, and so many people feel this in many areas of their life, it's like sometimes a, a person will say, I, I want such and such, and, or I don't want that. And as we try to elicit from them other things that they might want in an effort to get them to focus more productively on things that would align them. Sometimes they will say emphatically, Abraham, I don't want that. I've already got that. And what they are imparting to us is that they associate the feeling of wanting with a little twinge of not having. In other words, a lot of people associate yearning with what we mean by wanting, where when we use the word want, we mean it interchangeably with desire, and we mean that feeling of expansion that is calling you to a better place. Desire in and of itself is a delicious thing. Stay with us. We're building a basis okay. that you're really okay. going to appreciate. Uh -huh. so, so what we're getting at here with you is that you and almost everybody else you know, we think have been misunderstanding some of what the satisfaction that you were getting from the relationship really is. You've heard us say it, we've said it as we've been together in these days, looking for love in all the wrong places. And now, we'll just cut right to it quickly, you have discovered the deliciousness of alignment and so you are not needing to receive your alignment through the eyes of some other and you are also finding that self-satisfaction and now it feels to you like the place that was giving you not that but the replacement for it or the next best thing to it before you found this is going back but it's, it, it doesn't mean that that relationship does not still have the potential of satisfying you it means that you're asking for different things from it than you ever were before can you hear that? yeah I hear that I am yeah that's what we mean when we say when people come together and in other words when you tune into who you really are and then you look at anyone and you just said it to us it's what we were getting at when we were teasing you about answering your own questions mm -hmm. when when you realize that the lacks or missing parts that you see in someone else are not because there are missing parts it is because you are choosing to focus other than what's in your vibrational escrow we're not kidding you about that. You will never find fulfillment or freedom from any particle of the universe, including the person that you are living with, if you do anything less than accept that it's all up to you to find your satisfaction. And so we'll just say it in some, some brief and emphatic ways. It's your job to stay in love with another person. It's not their job to coax you into being in love with them. It's your job to stay in love. And, it, and let's take it further. It, we're not saying... It's your job to stay in love with him in his falling apart state. We're saying it's, it's your job to focus upon him in the vibrational escrow. It's your job to see him as he really is, not as he is temporarily being, you see. And so yeah. when you say, is there another, what we want to say to you is there are endless ways that the universe will yield to you what you are wanting. But we can feel from everything that you've put into your vibrational escrow that walking away from that would leave you feeling far less satisfied than tuning yourself up and extracting from from the vibrational escrow by virtue of your ability to focus upon it a reason to feel good in this moment. We've really been talking about that a lot and we know you're tired of hearing that you are the reason that you feel the way you do when there's someone in your face that's doing something that you so wish that they would do differently. We know, we know that you want to, you think you want to hear that. But if we were to give that to you, it would disempower you because what it says is they have the power to make you feel the way you feel, which means they have the power to withhold or to give 
give or to not know, to be ignorant, to be unwise. They have the power to mess up your experience by virtue of what they're doing and they do not.